Imagine being able to analyze 20 pages of financial data in a single request or transforming complex economic data into a digestible tweet. Welcome to the world of AI and macro. Today, we're diving deep into OpenAI's long context update to ChatGPT and creating an AI Twitter bot for macroeconomic data. The all new GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K offers an unprecedented context length, quadrupling the capacity to handle about 20 pages of text in a single request. The cost of the regular 4K GPT 3.5 Turbo is being reduced by 25%. How will the longer context stack up against the better GPT-4 model with its 8K context? We benchmark the three loadouts for GPT 3.5 at 4K context, GPT 3.5 at 16K context, and GPT-4 at 8K context for our previously analyzed investing ranking task. In our previous video, we compared ChatGPT 3.5 against an ensemble model for financial analysis. We measured performance using a train validation test structure to have a fair comparison. The key finding was that ChatGPT's effectiveness hinged on the temperature parameter, and while not outperforming the ensemble, the AI exhibited potential by generating interpretable predictions and confidence levels. To be fair, in our analysis, we use something called the Matthews Correlation Coefficient, MCC. Think of it like a summary statistic for multi-way classifications. We also used accuracy, which simply tells us how often the AI got its predictions correct. The dataset is updated from the last video to one covering the past year from this video. We tested each model five times where some differences are introduced by the temperature setting of 0.6, which was the recommended setting from the last video. The first model we tested was GPT 3.5 Turbo with a 4K context length. As you can see from the chart, it yielded an average MCC of 0.006 and an average accuracy of 21.1%. The standard deviation for MCC and accuracy were 0.023 and 1.7% respectively. Next, we tried the new GPT 3.5 Turbo with a 16K context length. The results were significantly better. It delivered an average MCC of 0.053 and an average accuracy of 24.7%. The standard deviations for MCC and accuracy were 0.039 and 2.1% respectively. Lastly, we tested the GPT-4 model with an 8K context length. Surprisingly, this model showed a simple regression in performance. It achieved an average MCC of negative 0.046 and an average accuracy of 18.4%, which is below random chance of 20%. The standard deviations for MCC and accuracy were 0.067 and 3.7% respectively. The results indicate that the GPT 3.5 Turbo with a 16K context length offers a better performance for this particular task. The expected result is long form content having a larger context length can contribute to higher accuracy and better results. Do you find this AI comparison intriguing? If yes, then hit that like button and let us know in the comments. While the GPT-4 model offers better architecture, it didn't surpass the new GPT-3.5 Turbo model with a 16K context length in this specific task. This doesn't necessarily mean GPT-4 is a lesser model. In our ChatGPT Pro experience, GPT-4 is far superior for most tasks. Then what's up? One fund manager hazarded the old garbage in, garbage out hypothesis. That isn't quite right since the dataset includes primary source financial filings regulated by the US Securities Exchange Commission and reviewed by third party auditors. The dataset is as high quality as they come. It could be possible there is an exogenous factor affecting markets that isn't covered by the financial filings dataset. This might affect GPT-4 more. If GPT-4 is better capturing a value perspective that isn't valued by the markets in the short term. Further, a closer look at the error bar shows that the models are close within a standard deviation. The overall performance of all three models isn't strong. The generative AI may not be suitable for this task out of the box without further customization. What could be a better task for GPT-4? 
A generative task like sharing complex economic data in simple bite-sized tweets is better suited, and we created just that. A Twitter bot that tweets macroeconomic data all on its own. Strap in and let's take a closer look. So this bot has a pretty cool job. It pulls in important economic data points like the federal funds rate, the unemployment rate, or the consumer price index, all directly from the Federal Reserve Economic Data Database, FRED for short. If you're interested, it's trivial to request an API key courtesy of Uncle Sam. Now, here's where it gets a bit technical. This data comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes, so the bot uses a tool called MinMax Scalar from the Scikit-Learn library to transform these numbers into a range between 0 and 1. This isn't fancy machine learning magic, it's just good old data normalization that helps us compare apples to apples for different time series. Actually, we don't use the normalized data in our Twitter bot, but we do use it in our mixture of experts ensemble. Alright, moving on. This bot is also a bit of a detective. It checks if the, this data is new or different from the last time it looked. If there's new data, bingo, it's time to craft a tweet. But how does it decide what to tweet, you ask? Enter stage right, OpenAI's GPT-4 model. This AI model can whip up a tweet that sounds like an economic expert penned it, all the while making sure it's easily understandable and fits within Twitter's 280 character limit. Once the tweet is ready, it's showtime on Twitter. The bot logs in using its Twitter API keys, thanks to a handy library called Tweepy. And there you have it. Our freshly minted tweet is now live for everyone to see. But that's not all. Our bot is smart. It remembers its past tweets to make sure it never repeats itself, as best as it can. After all, who likes hearing the same story twice? Diving deeper, we encounter the problems that popular open source software like Langchain and Lamadin Index try to solve. One crucial aspect is the bot's ability to maintain a conversation history with GPT-4. You see, having this history allows the AI to understand the context better. It's like having a running conversation with a friend. You both remember what's being said, right? We implement the history with a little double-ended cue for fast push and pops. This way, the AI doesn't repeat itself and can craft tweets that are relevant and timely. We didn't use Langchain or Llama Index because our application is relatively simple here and it's good practice to keep the dependencies as simple as possible. We've seen some impressive applications that ingest database level documents as vector stores, which is hardly necessary for tweets. Bonus, the long context models give us even more confidence. We don't have to go to a vector store. But you might be thinking, why not just tell GPT-4 to keep its responses within 280 characters? Wouldn't that be simpler? In an ideal world, yes. But in practice, it's a bit more complicated. GPT-4 doesn't have a tight mathematical sense. So to tackle this, our bot truncates the generated text on a sentence-wise basis until it fits within Twitter's character limit. This way, the tweet stays coherent and makes sense to anyone reading it instead of just abruptly cutting off. We've even encountered an example where we asked ChatGPT Pro to count characters in its generated tweet and it straight up lied to us. At least when corrected, it fessed up right away. And last but not least, our bot is also punctual. Every day between 9 and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, it wakes up and gets to work. If anything goes wrong during this process, it's smart enough to make a note in a log for debugging later. You can find our complete source code in the info box. And that's a wrap on our clever economic Twitter bot. So you see the design is doing a lot of heavy lifting behind the scenes. It's collecting and normalizing data, having meaningful exchanges with an AI, crafting tweets, and making sure it all fits within the constraints of Twitter. And it's doing all this every single day like clockwork. It's a fantastic example of how automation and AI can come together to make complex information more accessible and understandable. That's it for this deep dive into our macroeconomic Twitter bot. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more about how AI can be put to work, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, check us out on Twitter at Amicus AI. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.